Hi and welcome to this video from the best of CET series. In this video, we are going to cover three questions from the topic of time, speed and distance. So what you can do is, you can have a look at this slide which has all the three questions, try them out on your own and then have a look at the solutions that will follow. The ideal time to solve these questions is three minutes. So what you can do is, you can time yourself for three minutes, solve the questions and then have a look at the solutions. So I'll just show you the questions for this particular set and you can try these. So there are three questions that you can try. If you like our content and want to experience the IMS pedagogy, you can join the IMS zero fee prep programs that will give you access to concept videos, sectionals, full length tests and more for free. You may click on the i button or on the link in the description box below to access the same. Happy learning. Coming to the first question. Anmol and Saranya, 90 kilometers apart, start traveling towards each other at speeds 7 kilometers per hour and 8 kilometers per hour. In the second case, what happens is, had they started one hour earlier and their speeds would have changed to 4 kilometers per hour and 6 kilometers per hour, then when would they have met each other? And in the first case, they are meeting each other at 10 a.m. Now, there is obviously one simple way of doing this, wherein you put everything in the form of equations and solve those equations. So, in this case, 90 kilometers is the gap between Anmol and Saranya. Both of them are traveling in the opposite directions. So, their speeds will get added. So, if you look at it, what happens is 90 kilometers is going to be covered at a relative speed or an effective speed of 7 plus 8 kilometers per hour or 15 kilometers per hour. So, we can say that in the first case, the amount of time required to cover this distance is nothing but 90 divided by 15, that is 6 hours. After traveling for 6 hours, they meet each other at 10 a.m., which basically means that they should have started 6 hours earlier or they should have started simultaneously at 4 a.m. Now, what is happening in the second case? Their speeds change to 4 kilometers per hour and 6 kilometers per hour, meaning the effective speed or the relative speed is going to be 10 kilometers per hour. The distance remains the same. So, to cover 90 kilometers, at a speed of 10 kilometers per hour, they would be taking 90 divided by 10, that is 9 hours. So, that is what is going to happen. But what is happening is, they are starting an hour earlier. So, because they are starting an hour earlier, it essentially means that instead of 4 a.m., they will be starting at 3 a.m. So, if they are starting at 3 a.m. and they are going to take 9 hours, it basically means that 3 a.m. plus 9, that is 12 noon or 12 p.m is basically when they will be meeting each other for the first time. So, the answer here is option C that is 12 pm. You can also think about it in a slightly different manner so as to reduce your time. So, what you can think about here is, in the initial case, the effective speed was 15 kilometers per hour. In the second case, the relative speed was 10 kilometers per hour, 4 kilometers plus 6 kilometers per hour, so 10 kilometers per hour. Now, the speed in the second case is two-thirds of the speed in the first case. So, if speed becomes two-thirds of itself and the distance is constant, then the time taken should become three by two times of itself. So, that is one thing that we will have to do mentally. So, if speed becomes two-thirds of the original speed, new time becomes three by two times the original time, which basically means that if the original time taken is nine hours or rather six hours as we had figured out, then the new time will be three by two into six or nine hours which basically means that they would have taken three hours more to travel or to meet each other. They have started one hour earlier. So, out of those three extra hours that needed to be put in, they have already covered for one hour by starting one hour earlier. So, the remaining two hours will be adjusted on the other side of the journey, which basically means if you are starting one hour early, you will reach two hours late to cover for these three hours. And that's why if they are meeting at 10 a.m. in the first case, in the second case, they would be meeting at 12 p.m. So, using this logic, you can solve the same question mentally. In this question, the speed of the boat along the stream is 1.5 times the speed of the boat against the stream. Now, the speed of boat in still water is 4 meters per second. Due to rains, the speed of water doubles. Now, what is the speed of the boat in the direction of the stream? So, what we have to figure out here is very straightforward. Now, you can get all tangled in trying to figure out what is B, what is S or SB and SS, take the ratios, cross multiply and all those kind of things. But if you know the simple concept of componendo dividendo and you can apply it without any hesitation in these kind of questions, you would have done a good job. 
So in this case, I will show you directly what is the shorter method. So in this case, the speed of both boat along the stream, which means you can say speed of boat plus speed of stream is 1.5 times the speed of boat against the stream. So you can say B plus S upon B minus S is 1.5. Now if you apply component to dividend over here, then what is going to happen is you are going to directly get B by S equals 1.5 plus 1 upon 1.5 minus 1. For those of you who don't know component to dividend over, you can just go back and understand it from your concept books or from the internet. So here if you are looking at B by S is 1.5 plus 1 upon 1.5 minus 1, speed of boat to speed of stream is going to be 2.5 upon 0 0.5 or you can say 5 is to 1. So if the speed of boat is 5 units, then the speed of stream becomes 1 unit. That is what we are trying to say here. But we know that the speed of the boat in still water is 4 meters per second. So I know that the value of B is 4. If the value of B is 4, then the value of stream becomes 4 by 5. So stream will become 4 by 5 or 0 0.8. But in this case, the speed of water has doubled. So instead of 0.8, speed of water has become 1.6 meters per second. So what is the speed of the boat in the direction of the stream? This will basically mean what is the value of S plus B in this case. So the value of S is uh, 1.6 in this case, the value of B is 4. 4 plus 1.6 will give you the answer as 5.6 meters per second or option B. In this question, circumference of the front wheel of the cart is 40 feet and that of the back wheel is 48 feet. If the front wheel has done 5 more revolutions, what is the distance covered by the cart? So there are 2 or 3 things that you can do here. The first thing is you just look at the numbers, look at the options, you will probably get your answer. So if you look at something, in this case, the circumference. 40 feet long is the amount of distance that is covered when the front wheel makes one rotation. 48 feet is the amount of distance that is covered when the back wheel makes one rotation. Now in these cases, you have to have a leap of faith and you have to trust the paper setter to give you good numbers to play with. So we can automatically say that the distance that would be covered should be a multiple of 40 as well as 48. If you look at the options and if you look at one obvious number that is going to be a multiple of 40 as well as 48 or a multiple of the LCM of 40 and 48 that is 240, you would get your answer to be 1200. In most cases, your answer will be right. So if you are extremely short on time and want to take a risk, you can just mark 1200 and forget about the question. If you have some time on hand, what you can think about is a basic equation. So let us say for example, the front wheel does 5 more revolutions than the rear wheel. Let us say the real wheel makes x revolutions. So the front wheel would be making x plus 5 revolutions. The circumference of the front wheel is 40. So the total distance covered by the front wheel is going to be 40 into x plus 5. Now because the entire vehicle has moved ahead, the distance covered by the front wheel should be equal to the distance covered by the rear wheel. Otherwise the wheels will get separated which is not sensible in this context. So this will be equal to 48 times x. So rear wheel is x, rear wheel the circumference is 48, so 48 times x will be equal to 40 into x plus 5. So you get 40x plus 200 equals 48x or you will get 8x equals 200 meaning x equals 25. If x equals 25 and we have to find the distance travelled by the cart, we can substitute the value of x either in this part of the equation or in this part of the equation. The value should be the same. So 48 into 25 will be nothing but 25 8s are 200, 25 4s are 100 plus 20 is 120. So you are going to get 1200 as your answer. You can also think about it in one small way if you are especially good at mentally doing all your calculations. What you can think of is the circumference of the front wheel is 40, back wheel is 48. So the ratio of the circumferences is going to be nothing but 5 is to 6. 40 by 48 or 5 by 6, which basically means that whatever happens, the front wheel would have covered 1 foot less for every 6 feet that would have been covered by the back wheel. That is what it's, the interpretation is. Now, in this case, the front wheel has done 5 more revolutions than the rear wheel. Then what is the distance travelled by the cart? That is basically the question. If the front wheel has done 5 more revolutions than the rear wheel, so we can say that if the front wheel has done 25 revolutions, then the back wheel should have done 30 revolutions. We know that 
the front wheel is 40 feet long and the back wheel is 48 feet long. So, what we have to do in this case? We have to either multiply the back wheel by 40 or the front wheel by 48, which means we have to multiply either 25 by 48 or 30 by 40. In either case, the answer is going to be 1200. So, that is another way to think about this. It is an extremely easy way if you can visualize numbers in a better manner. So, I hope you have learnt your lessons from these particular questions. You can try out more questions that you come across from this topic by using the methods that we have just discussed. We will see you in the next video. Till then, happy learning.